Praise the Lord. We thank God that today we are here again. We have been teaching the subject of discipleship and every occasion that we have of talking about this issue, this important uh, aspect of the Christian doctrine, I get delighted because I believe discipleship is the key to the success of the Christian life. So today we are glad that we are here. And we pray that you will be blessed in the message that we have to uh, teach. Today we are looking at another set of uh, topics that relate together. And for the next three weeks, we shall be talking about that. Uh, but before we start, we want to pray to God to anoint our lips so that we don't really talk without impact. Let us pray. In Jesus' name, Father, we glorify your name for bringing us here and for helping us today. We are here on an important assignment to teach the word of God because you commanded us yourself. Say, go ye into all the world and teach, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. So we are teaching what you have commanded. Help us today to teach well. Help us today to teach that people may understand. Lord, Anoint our tongue, our lips, help it to present you correctly. Thank you, Lord, as we have prayed in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since about two weeks now, I've been urging someone inspired to buy us a keyboard here. The, the keyboard that used to be used was borrowed. But we need to have one here because in meetings and services like this, we need to sing. So today I'm going to sing without uh, the organ as I have had to do the last two weeks. I'm singing one hymn which I love to sing for meetings like this. In fact, it's one of the hymns that I have in this uh, redemption hymn now that I, I, I love specially, and it's uh, number 474 in our redemption hymn now, 474. And for a teaching meeting like this, I think this is one of the best. 474, teach me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy way, thy gracious aid afford, Teach me thy way. Help me to walk aright. More by faith, less by sight. Lead me 
in heavenly light, teach me thy way. When doubts and fears arise, teach me thy way. When storms were spread the skies, teach me thy way. Shine through the cloud and rain. Through sorrow, toil, and pain. Make thou my pathway plain. Teach me thy way. Long as my life shall last, teach me thy way. Wherever my lot is cast, Teach me thy way until the race is run, until the journey is done, until the crown is won. Teach me thy way. Teach me thy way, O Lord. Teach me thy way. Thy gracious faith adore, teach me thy way. Help me to walk aright, more by faith, less by sight. Lead me with heavenly light. Teach me thy way. When doubts and fears arise, teach me thy way. When storms were spread the skies, teach me thy way. Shine through the cloud and rain, through sorrow, Toil and pain, make thou my pathway plain. Teach me thy way. Long as my life shall last, teach me thy way. Where my lot be cast. Teach me thy way until the race is run, until the journey is done, until the crown is won. Teach me thy way. Amen. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I believe that should be the prayer of every one of us. Teach me thy way. So, I welcome you to the teaching of today. I thank God that we have been able to go thus far. What have we done? I've told you the subject is discipleship. The disciple of Christ. We started with definitions. Who is a disciple? Who is a discipler? What is discipleship. And what is the process of discipleship? We said discipleship is a process, lifelong process, throughout life. 
process of making someone who has willingly volunteered himself or herself to become like Jesus Christ. To be made like Jesus Christ. Whatever it may cost. To be like him. So, discipleship is a process of making a willing volunteer to be made like his master. In this case, Jesus Christ. So, that is discipleship. A lifelong process. It's a school in which you don't graduate. You start and continue. You'll be getting better and better every day. The manager of, this, of the process, the Holy Spirit, will be revealing to you your weaknesses or your successes. Where you, where you have succeeded, you are encouraged to go further. Where you have not succeeded, will help you not to be discouraged and strengthen you to go on. And then you, you go on. And as you go, you see new things. You see the failure of the human being in totally following Jesus Christ. But the Holy Spirit will be guiding you and helping you. I cannot forget the day or the time when the Holy Spirit taught me not to drive without license. I've told this story here. Once I went for driving test. After I bought a car and I had been tested and trained and I thought I knew it. So I went for a test. That was, I think, 1973. And I went for the test in Lagos Island. I got there and the BIO, the officer, vehicle inspection officer who was going to uh, test me, entered, we both entered the car, my car, and we drove. He asked me to dro drive towards Ikoyi. And I did. I got to inside the Koyi as we were going. And then he said, uh, stop. Okay, turn around now without touching the cab. I never had anything like that before. What is cab? What is cab? I didn't ask him. But I just said, okay, turn around. So I turned around. This is in the the road is fairly narrow here uh, at that point. So I took off, turned around. The front tires went onto the grass on the other side. And then I reversed. The back tires went into the grass on the other side. And eventually, I just maneuvered and turned the vehicle around back to Lagos Island. The man didn't say anything. As we sat in the office, he said, gentlemen, sorry you failed the test. 
And I said, what? I failed the test. Uh, what happened? They asked you to turn around without touching the cab. Uh -huh. And your tires, front tires, went on the grass on that side. The back tires went on the grass on this side. Eh? That's the cab. And that's why I'm failed now. Okay, thank you. Give me my papers. So I collected my papers. I went back. I then decided I am not going to go to con uh, to come for a test again. I know how to drive. The vehicle is mine. Even if I have a, a license, if I hit anybody, I'll be made to pay. So let me go on. I knew, I knew how to drive. I was driving well. Even during police check, I knew how to beat police in case they want to ask me for a license, your particulars. I knew how to dodge that. All I need to, once I see very cool uh, officers on the road or police officers on the road, well, I have to keep my eyes straight as if I didn't even know they were there. I wouldn't look right or left, I would just go on straight. And since I won't be wearing dirty clothes and so, they will just naturally say, this is, this is a clean person. And hold my, even when I'm passing there, I don't even look side to say hello. I just go straight and I know how to drive. I drive through. They won't ask me. I know how to beat one way. All you need to do is to turn, turn back. When you want to go to a, a one way, you want to go where you should, you should not go. Uh, you can go with your back. So you reverse through. I knew all this. Now I thought I was do, doing well. Then the Holy Spirit said to me, you are driving without a license. Uh-huh. That is true. But I know how to drive. A few more minutes, you are driving without a license. Eh? I went for tests, but they did, it's not my fault. They didn't give me the, And I drove well. I know that. I drove well. Only minor or something. Don't touch the cab. Is that enough to disqualify me? After I make my case, quietly, this, the voice will come again. You are driving without a license. If anything happens, I take responsibility for it. After some time again, you are driving without a license. Ha! They, 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 they don't pass people there. They just use every excuse to, to fail. You are driving without a license. No argument with me. After some time, I now said, ah. in order that this spirit will not trouble me, I will go and do it again. But I won't do it in that place. I'll go to another place. So I did it in Lagos. I failed, so I decided I'm going to Elisha. Maybe that's my hometown. I will do it at Elisha. And I went. 
Even my car had a problem uh, at that time. Um, there was a part of the, the tire that got swollen. So as I was going, it would be making sound. Buku, buku, buku. So, but I went through. The uh, inspection officer said, what's wrong with this, your car? I said, well, it just started. I don't know what has happened. So, and I drove around. No question about calf this time. Even if he asked me, I knew. So, I said, okay. You have passed, I will, succeed. I will give you license. Oh. So I took the license, put it in my pocket. I said, okay, now you Lagos people, here is it with my license. But what I'm coming into now is this. The Spirit of God te kept telling me, you are driving without a license. After many arguments with myself, I had to yield. Now, that's the, that's the process that God takes to make us to be like Christ, to carry no offense. And that will go on throughout life because many things will face us anytime. Even at my age, I have many other things that where I have to take a decision to follow Christ and not to follow the inst instincts of the flesh. So that's the process. And it's a lifelong process. It's a process the same for the king as well as for the subject. It's a, pro uh, a process, the same process for the manager. It's a process, same process for the messenger. It is the same process for the man as for the woman. So, it's everybody who wants to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, such a person must go through that process. But as you go on, it is very enjoyable when you see how Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, makes you to conform to his own image. Praise the Lord. I understand how the Spirit takes you out of your own uh, evil culture in your environment. I come, to, I, I come from a place where it's very easy. It is common to abuse people and cause. Oh, you, it will not be well with you. Oh, you are a bastard. Oh, you, you, your, your head is upside down. Oh, all kinds. But Jesus Christ has taken all this away from me. And it took me, uh, I mean, it took me some time to. I remember when I took my children to the convention ground here. The convention hall at that time was like where this uh, Adigboiga Primary School is now. That's where the convention hall was. Where we are now, it's all bush. Uh, and I was living at Ebutimeta. And I carried the children and my wife. We came to the convention ground. And uh, as we 
when we finished, it was still, we finished the, the service so that we can still go back uh, by daylight. So I brought the children and uh, I was going back. Then somebody was wanting to talk to me. Nana, uh, he, he was interested in some issues which I needed to explain to him. So as we walked out of the gate of the convention hall, uh, and I was talking with the gentleman, then my, my children became uh, agitated. Hey, 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 daddy, hey, 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 let's go home, let's go home, let's go home. Ah, what? I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. And again, hey, let's go, let's go. There were three of them there. Hey, let's go home, let's go. Ah, what, what's wrong with you? Ah, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm talking to somebody at a stage. When they, they, they move my emotion to the point that I said, are, are, you, are you mad? Huh? Then the person who I was talking with said, ah, Alagba, Elder, now you talk this. Ah. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Holy Spirit, I'm sorry. I shouldn't do it. So, since then I've learned to not to curse, not to abuse. So, what am I saying? Jesus Christ wants to purge us, purge us, cleanse us from all uh, dirty things in our life, so that we will be like Him. And I thank God that since that time, the Lord has been doing this work, uh, one problem or the other. So, process of cleansing. And we say that that thing is for everybody. Then, we try to explain in the last two or three months now, that this discipleship and being born again. Okay, let me, before that, we talked about discipleship and uh, water baptism. Okay. That discipleship has to do or starts with new birth. Discipleship begins with new birth. When you are born again, then the, 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 the work starts. And what is the evidence of your being born again? One of the need, things that, the essential, an essential thing that you do is water baptism. And they do that with your own testimony, given that you have forsaken the world, you have accepted Christ, and you are ready to follow him as a disciple. So those three stages. The first stage of your acknowledging your sinfulness. The second stage of seeing the, 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 the sacrifice of Christ as your way to God. And the third part, that you will follow him as his disciple from then on throughout life. And we spent time to discuss that and the relevance of water baptism. Then we talked about uh, discipleship and obedience. We have to be obedient. You have to be obedient to Christ. Follow me, and you follow. Sit down, and you sit down. 
prayer and fasting today and you do it. Evangelical outing tomorrow and you do it. Obedience. Not half obedience. And then after that, we have to be trained. We have to learn. Discipleship is a call to learning. You have to learn. The way of Christ is a new way. It's not something you can uh, come by through the old way, through the normal human way. No, it's different, far, far different. You have to learn it. Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So this way of life must be learned. You can't just discover it. Jesus Christ has to teach you. The way of Christ. When, take for example, when Jesus Christ first got his disciples, he took them up to the mountain and taught them. And taught them. One of the things that he taught them was like, like this. When they slap you on the right cheek, then turn the left cheek to them. Huh? What, what can that be? The, the best you, the best in human nature is that you avoid such a person. The normal thing for man is somebody slap, uh, slaps you, you kick that person. You retaliate. But the way of Christ, you don't, uh, you don't revenge. Avenge not yourself. Jesus Christ is the one to do it for you. So, that's a different, a way of life that is completely different. You have to learn. But to learn is not easy. Human nature is a difficult nature, stubborn nature. So in order to overcome stubborn nature, you have to be tied. Tied to Christ. You have to be linked with Christ. You are yoked with Christ. That's what the Bible says. You are yoked with Christ. Jesus Christ said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The fact is that you are in a yoke, you are tied to something. In this case, a yoke of Christ, you are tied to Christ. You can't move away. You have to go where he, wherever he goes. You have to move at the same pace as he's moving. You are yoked. So as you are yoked, then it, it becomes easy to train you. When you see war, danger, don't run away. You can't run away because you are tired. When there is fight, and you want to join in the fight, but your master is going somewhere different, you can't go to fight. The, the, the yoke with him takes you to go with him. 
and not to do your own wish. So, that's what we did up to last uh, outing. And we showed that this way is sweet, oh. The yoke is sweet. When you try it, it may be, it may appear as if it's difficult. Uh, how can, you are not free. Ah. One hymn writer, which we sang about two weeks ago, said, uh, five, five, seven, 575, uh, and it gives us very interesting exp uh, ex expression. Very, uh, uh, very nice. Five, 575. He said, Thou sweet beloved will of God. Let me go straight to uh, verse 3. O lightest body and sweetest yoke, it lifts. It bears my happy soul. It giveth wings to this poor heart. My freedom is thy grand control. That's what I want. My freedom is his <coughs> grand control. It is when <coughs> I'm under his control, I'm yoked to him. That is when I'm truly free. Free from danger. Free from evil. Because while I'm close to him, I'm under his shadow. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. My freedom is when you are in control. So, yoke can be very sweet. Yoke can be very interesting. So, that is what we learned about uh, the relevance of teaching with uh, discipleship. That's where we were. Now, we want to move on to another uh, sector. From now on, we will deal with these various sectors ahead of us, explaining this sector is explaining some of the points that we discussed earlier on, explaining in details. One of uh, the meetings, we, we decided, um, we talked on the conditions of discipleship. It was Jesus Christ himself who gave these conditions. We find it in... Uh, the Luke 9, Luke 9, 20, verse 23. It's also in Luke 14, verse, verse from verse 25. But let me take Luke 9. Verse 23. Luke 9, verse 20, 23. And he said to them all, to them all, without exception, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself 
and take off his cross daily and follow me. In uh, Luke 14, the situation is even made more, more pungent. Luke 9. Uh, Luke 14, verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren, and sisters, uh, yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. Let's know that word. He cannot be my disciple. Verse 27. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Now, let me, there's yet another one, verse uh, 33. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So, that week some time ago, whether in the April or May, I can't remember right now, we dealt with this. These three or four cannot. Cannot. Conditions for discipleship. The first one is he cannot deny, I mean, if you don't, if you do not deny yourself, you cannot be my disciple. That's the point I want to elaborate upon a little bit today. Next week we'll deal with, if any man does not follow me, he cannot be my disciple. If any man does not bear his own cross daily, he cannot be my disciple. If anyone does not forsake all that he has, very short sentence, but is very pregnant with meaning, he cannot. <coughs> so today I'm discussing uh, he cannot if he has not denied himself. And we are going to spend the rest of this month, looking at it. Three more lessons, or no, three lessons altogether. The first one is today. If any man does not deny himself, he cannot be my disciple. What does it mean to deny, to deny self? To deny self. That's what we are discussing. And uh, I want to quickly look at that. But by the grace of God, we will get the message clear. If any man does not deny himself, he cannot. Not that he will not do it well. He cannot. So today we are looking at that. What does it mean? What does it mean to deny self? I have six words or six expressions that try to describe denying. The first one is disown. 
What does that mean? The zone. That is, you don't entertain it. You don't know he's, he's speaking. You don't know he's talking. You, 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 you. Okay, if somebody, if somebody, if a relation is misbehaving somewhere else in public, and you see that person, and you see the character, the, the thing that he do is so shameful, you disown. I remember once, I was, uh, when we were in Maryland, a, the son of one of our members in that village was troublesome, difficult, and he was stealing. So he, in that village, he went somewhere in the night and tried to steal. And I don't know how it happened. He was killed, and his body was lying on the road. And uh, information got to us that somebody, this, this uh, boy had been killed. And we went there, and I passed. And I, I slowed down to look at. Then somebody asked me, eh, do you know him? Uh, I said, no, I don't know him. I disowned him because I didn't want me to be linked up with him. So yourself, what you, what, what you call yourself, your ego, your personality, you disown. You don't entertain, you don't, you don't acknowledge, you don't say you are, you, you be, you, you belong to that person. Or disregard. The, f the flesh, the desire, may be, may be requiring you, may be requiring you to, to react or to do something. But you refuse to give it attention. You disregard it. There is a, there is a word, or uh, there is an expression. Uh, is in the book of uh, Job, Job, uh, Job 31, Job 31. I think it's in the first verse. Job 31, verse 1. So, it reads, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? I made a covenant with my eyes. I told my eyes, if, if you begin to see a woman, because Jesus Christ said, when you see a woman and you lost after her in your heart, you have committed ad adultery. That's what Jesus Christ said. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse uh, uh, 27, it says, uh, You have heard that it was said by them of old, old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Say, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, has committed adultery with her already. In other words, you, you see a woman and uh, you, you are attracted 
And you begin to look. As you are beginning to look and look, you will be lost in your, in your heart. Oh, I wish I sleep with this, with this woman. I, I got, I, 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 I. You have already committed the offense. That this is the New Testament way. The way that is difficult for man. Different from me. And you know, the women of today, they dress such that you can lust after them. Of course, God will judge them for their uh, putting you in temptation. Yes, they will. I mean, they will be judged. But you also, you have your own problem. You too, you, you, you will suffer for it. So, I, you, as Job said, I made a covenant with my eye. Why do you want to cause problems for, for yourself? Leave the, leave the, the, the satanic influence that is making people dress in, a, in a, a provocative ways. So, you, 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 are, you are not responding to the urges of the flesh. You are not uh, reacting. As soon as you see, take off your eyes. Don't look a second time. So, that's what the, this uh, verse is saying here. Disregard. Ignore. Make Make deliberate effort not to react, not to accept his impulses. Refuse, refuse to accept. One thing I, I do with the help of the Spirit of God if I see provocative things in the, in the public, I look at it as if maybe I'm going on the road and a vehicle that has splashed, has uh, splashed some dirt on my dress. Ah, I look at the dress. I try to pull it off. I, and that is, I pray to God. I say, Lord, ah, please cleanse my heart to I take away my I take away my eyes immediately and ask God, take away this, cleanse my heart. I look away. I have made a covenant with my eye. Why should a person, somebody I don't know, come and land me in trouble and block the way? to eternity with God. So, I refuse. I reject the impulses. That is to deny yourself. I reject the impulses of, of self. When somebody, somebody may insult me, and I say, ah, you are doing that to me? Uh -huh. So there is a me somewhere there. Ah. If I say it once, I will, I will not say it a second time or third time. Ah. This is what you are doing. You. I say, yes. I just keep it away. So as not to smear my own garment. Another way of thinking of deny yourself is, is to demobilize. Demobilize so that you don't have any feeling of it. A good, a good way A good way 
of demobilizing. Let me an experience of demobilizing is this. If you have toothache, if you have toothache, one way of removing that faulty tooth, they give you an injection in your mouth. And it deadens, it deadens your, your, uh, it deadens your, your, your flesh. It deadens your flesh. So, you are then, you, you, when they are now extracting the teeth, you don't feel it because you have had uh, that injection. It makes your teeth look like uh, just ordinary wood. So, you, that, that is, that's denying, you demobilize. You demobilize. So, what we are saying is, uh, therefore, deny oneself means consigning the life one now lives to Christ, recognizing that it belongs to him. Thus, whatever you do, whatever anybody does, any disciple, will, it will be exactly as Jesus Christ would do if he were in that person's uh, situation. This giving up of one's life for Christ stems from the fact that he already belongs, he, he already has been bought or redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. Another way of, or another issue is this, that this process of living like Christ is made easy by the grace for this opportunity that we have of, the, of discussing uh, disciple of Jesus Christ, how he has to deny himself. It's not a case uh, a, a whole me, there is no me anymore. Surrender yourself. Father, teach us this your way, which is different from the way of the world. Help us to understand you, and we shall continue to follow you. We are praying in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is where we will stop today. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Fear not. For oh, the Lord will do great things for us. Fear not. For the Lord will do great things for us. Fear not, for the Lord will do great things for us. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you very much.